So let's see an example. Our new primal problem and its embedded tableaus are here, right? We have a new variable constraint. Uh, this should be x1 and x2. And we have a new tableau with a new row and of course the new column for x5. So this is the issue. The negative one here is something that we need to fix. So according to the rule, we say, let's look at a negative right-hand side value. So it's this guy, okay? This tells us a living variable. Our S3 should leave the basis. It cannot be in the basis because including it in the basis, we have a not a basic feasible solution. So then we need to look for a pivot. In this particular example, it's easy. Why is that? Well, if you think about this, you first, you see that you have two options. Okay, your non-basic variables are S1 and S2. One of them should enter. There's no chance for you to look at the others. And obviously, you are going to choose the one with the negative number here. Because you're going to do some ratio test, right? You're going to change this guy into one. This guy to be negative one half this guy to be negative one half and this guy to be one half only if you choose a number here which is negative then after you do this um, elementary row operation you are going to fix the right hand side value to be positive so we need to fix your primal infeasibility the pivot must be a negative number so that the row operation fix the bug. So let's try this pivoting. Our negative one is our negative right hand side. So this should be our pivoting row. And we know this negative two is our pivot. So we're going to do row operation on row three. We're going to multiply negative one half on row three. And that gives us this one as our new row three we can see that the right hand side value now becomes good. And then we do the very typical ratio test. We're going to use the zeroth row to subtract the third row. We're going to add the last row to the second row and to the first row. Once we do all of this, this column for S3, or this column for S1, okay, is going to be our basic column and we can see that all these numbers are non-negative. All these numbers are non-negative. Reduce costs are non-negative. Right-hand sides are non-negative. This becomes our optimal solution. Okay. So again, we can see that, well, if we have a linear program, we add a new constraint. There's no need to go from the very beginning. You actually may just do one iteration to fix the bug we observe here. You don't need to go from the iteration 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to iteration 1000. You just do a few iterations to get to your new optimal tableau. Um, this is very attractive. So after one iteration, we get to this, right? This means our S3 leaves and the S1 enters. This allows us to see that our current basic solution becomes x1, x2, and s1, and they should be 1, 5 over 2, and 1 over 2. So that means our optimal solution is changed. Previously, we want to produce 2 units of product 1, 2 units of product 2, but now I'm going to produce 1 unit of product 1 and 5 over 2 units of product 2. Why is that? Because product 1 is forced to be produced uh, to produce at most one unit of product one so we need to cut down our production quantity for product one then we should produce product two a little bit more and the best thing we may do is to increase it to five over two we're going to have some leftover for resource one but that's the best we can do okay so that's how we see an optimal solution it corresponds to this solution, and the z is um, decreased a little bit. Previously, it's 20. Now it becomes 19 over 2. Everything makes sense. So that example was somehow easy. 
but there are some other situations that we need further consideration. So let's see this purely pedagogical example. Here I say it is pedagogical because I just need some numbers to show you the process. So this tableau looks somehow similar to the previous one, but it has nothing to do with that particular example. We're not changing that example to this one. We have a new example here. Okay, suppose we run the simplex method to some um, optimal tableau. And then somehow after we add a new constraint or another new constraint or whatever, somehow we get multiple negative right hand side at the same time. Okay, suppose that's the case. Oh, so if you want to have a scenario, just imagine that you have two new constraints at the same time. Okay, so if that's the case, then we need to think about which variable to leave, right? In this case, you can pick any one you like. This is just very similar to the in the past when we have multiple negative reduced cost, we pick any one we like. And typically we follow the smallest index rule, right? So if we do that in this case, we're going to say, okay, this is S1, okay, this is S3, which somehow means the last variable. So we're going to look at X1. So this is smallest index rule, but of course you may choose other rules if they are okay. Okay, so we have this particular living variable. Then what's even more important is that we now have multiple negative numbers, negative two and then negative one. One of them must be the pivot, but which one? Well, the answer is actually very easy because we know we need to maintain dual feasibility. We need to make all those reduced costs to be non-negative, right? So. In the worst case, we may do some kind of experiments. Let's try to pivot at negative two to see whether this number becomes negative. Or let's try to pivot at negative one and to see the other negative reduced cost, whether it becomes a negative. If I want to pivot at negative two, okay, I'm going to do all the very typical pivoting. I'm going to change this as not one, this as one half. And then when I subtract the first row from the zeroth row, this is negative two, looks good. On the other hand, if I try to pivot at negative one, it is bad. Eventually we will see that another reduced cost becomes negative one, which is not allowed. So we can do this. But of course we don't want to do this because if we have a very huge tableau, uh, checking all these possibilities is going to cost us a lot of time. And we may also see that previously when we are doing primal simplex, we are doing ratio test to make sure that all the right hand sides do not become negative, right? So here we do the same thing. We have one row here, another row here, we have this pair and then this pair to consider. What we need to do is that we should do the ratio test. We still use the numbers at the border, at the margin, to put at the numerator. And we still use those um, constraint coefficient values to be our denominator. Okay, And once we do that, basically we do some experiments, we can see our rule is that after we do this division, we take the absolute value. And once we have that, all we need to do is to compare which variable or which variable, which column has the smallest absolute ratio. Okay, in this case, one half is less than one. So this is our pivot. One is greater than one half. Okay, uh, this is one half. So in that case, your negative one should not be your uh, pivot. We choose the number where its corresponding ratio, its absolute value is the smallest. Then we may guarantee that we can maintain dual feasibility.